Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim. I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in United Kingdom and today we're going to be discussing case number four from our Facebook page. So this was a case of a 78 years old female presented to ED with sudden onset of shortness of breath and chest pain. Her observations on arrival were oxygen saturation of 95% on 10 litres of oxygen, blood pressure of 75 over 45, so really concerning observations um, with significant hypotension and hypoxia. Her venous blood gas showed a lactate of 5. Her examination from the chest point of view was normal and her chest x-ray was normal. So she's had an ECG and this was her ECG. So having a look at this ECG, um, if you've got a good memory, you will remember that we've seen this ECG last week and uh, we've talked about the incomplete right bundle branch, branch block that we can see uh, here looking at uh, V1. So we've got an RSR dash here. We've also got a um, S1Q3T3. We've got an ST elevation in AVR and in V1. If you combine all these together, in addition to the clinical presentation, I guess you should be thinking of pulmonary embolism. So um, this was the provisional diagnosis for this case. We were thinking massive pulmonary embolism. So the working diagnosis was, was this, so massive pulmonary embolism. Um, she's had a bedside echo that showed um, a big right ventricle. So the treatment decision was to start immediate thrombolysis. So this was started and while the thrombolysis was ongoing, a repeat ECG was done. And here we go. So this will be the true beginning of our case. Uh, this was her second ECG that was done while thrombolysis was ongoing. This was her first ECG that she came with. And this was the second. And what I want you to do now is to pause the video, have a proper look at the two ECGs, compare them to each other and try to find the difference and correlate this with your provisional diagnosis and let's see if it matches that or not. Okay, welcome back. Let's uh, analyze the ECG and see how it goes. If you have a look at this side of the ECG, so this is V1, V2, V3 of the ECG on attendance uh, when she came. And um, if you look at the T waves in this part of the ECG, you will notice that We've got an inverted T wave in V1, and it's kind of trying to be inverted in V2, but not really inverted, uh, and it's definitely upright in V3. In the second ECG, same leads showed uh, an inverted T wave in V1, but also an inverted T wave in V2, and an inverted T wave in V3. So she flipped her T waves in V2 and V3. Moving on to the inferior leads of the original ECG, you will notice here that we've got a, an upright T wave in lead 2, um, an inverted T wave in lead 3, uh, and an upright T wave in lead AVF. In the repeat ECG, we've definitely got a more deeply inverted T wave in lead 3 and a definite new T wave inversion in AVF. So again, flipped, new flipped T waves in the inferior leads. So the question now is, does this match with pulmonary embolism or not? We've talked about signs of PE in ECG last week, and uh, let's reinforce this and review it. So new right bundle branch block, whether it's a complete or incomplete, it is seen in about 20% of cases with PEs. Right axis deviation, again, in about 15% of cases, Sinus tachy in 30 to 50 percent, S1Q3T3, and we know now that it is not sensitive and it's not specific, and it's seen in about 20 percent of cases. P pulmonary, so peaked um, P waves, uh, so it's a sign of right atrial enlargement, and it's seen in about 10 percent of cases. We've also talked last week about tachyarrhythmias that can happen with any PEs. And we've talked about the ST elevation and depression, and especially we focused on the ST elevation in AVR, lead 3, in lead V1 and V2. 
So we've covered all of this last week. The other finding that I want to focus on this week is new T wave inversion in the inferior leads and anterior leads in the same time. So simultaneous T wave inversion in inferior and anterior leads. This is actually uh, seen in about 35% of cases. And guess what? It's highly specific for acute pulmonary hypertension. It's actually one of the most specific signs that I'm aware of for acute pulmonary hypertension in and in the emergency medicine language, that's PE. This is quoted from Life in the Fast Lane, and uh, they wrote there that, that simultaneous T wave inversions in the inferior and right precordial leads is the most specific finding in favor of pulmonary embolism. And uh, there are studies that reported specificity of up to 99% of this sign. So let's go through the literatures and have a quick look at that. And um, I will add the links to these literatures in the show notes of the video on the YouTube channel. Here's our first study that was published in Journal of Emergency Medicine. And one of the authors is, as you can see here, Amal Matu. Uh, this uh, study title was Simultaneous T-Wave Inversion in Anterior and Inferior Leads as an Uncommon Sign of Pulmonary Embolism. And in this one, uh, the authors talked in the background that uh, recent investigators uh, have found a new ECG finding, which is the simultaneous T-wave inversion in anterior and inferior leads. And the primary outcome of this uh, study was to estimate the prevalence of this finding in PE. And in their conclusion, they found that actually simultaneous T-wave inversion in the anterior and inferior leads in the same time that was associated with pulmonary embolism, and they've seen this in about 4 to 11% of cases. And in the same study, the authors reported a sensitivity of 11% and a specificity of a 95% of having V1 T wave inversion and LE3 T wave inversions to be associated with pulmonary embolism. Here is another one. Uh, that is titled Acute Pulmonary Embolism with ECG Changes Mimicking Acute Coronary Syndrome. This was a case report with literature review. And this is the ECG that they've reported. And if you look closely, they've got T wave inversions in the inferior leads, so 2 3 AVF, and anterior leads in the same time. Again, another one. Uh, coming from the American Journal of Cardiology about ECG differentiation between acute pulmonary embolism and acute coronary syndrome based upon negative T waves. And in this one, they've reported that negative T waves in lead 3 and V1, they've seen this in about 1% of cases with acute coronary syndrome compared to 88% of cases of acute pulmonary embolism. So in their conclusion, they said that the presence of negative T waves in both 3N V1 uh, leads um, allows P to be differentiated simply but accurately from acute coronary syndrome. So let's have a look at more examples uh, from uh, actual real cases. So this was a 16 year old female patient presented to ED with non-specific chest pain. There was a concern about pulmonary embolism till she's had her ECG that showed this. And actually this ECG confirmed the concern about acute pulmonary embolism looking at the S1 slight Q wave, but definite T wave inversion in three. So it's mainly S1, T3 um, and sinus tachy, but also there is a T wave inversion in the inferior leads and anterior leads in the same time. So this patient has had a CTPA that showed the submassive P and this case actually was thrombolized successfully. Here is another example of a 73-year-old female with shortness of breath for five weeks with hypoxia. On arrival to ED, this was her ECG. And as you can see here, she's got a, an S1Q3T3. And also, she's got T wave inversions in the inferior leads and anterior leads. So that raised the suspicion of acute pulmonary embolism. She's had a CTPA that confirmed right main pulmonary artery PE. Another example of an 85 year old female presented to ED with shortness of breath for four weeks and she was actually referred by GP as severe pneumonia for admission. And on arrival to ED, this was her ECG. And as you can see here, 
she's got T wave inversions in the inferior leads, T wave inversions in the anterior leads. So again, PE was suspected. She's had a CTPA that showed bilateral submassive PE with right heart strain. And actually, this was her CTPA. And as you can see here, she's got a big uh, pulmonary embolus in the uh, left pulmonary artery. Another example of an 80 year old male patient presented to ED with a recurrent syncopal event with actually no chest pain or shortness of breath. This was his ECG on arrival. Again, T wave inversions in the inferior leads, T wave inversions in the anterior leads. So PE was suspected, CTPA was done, and he was found to have bilateral PE. And his CTPA was this. So left sided pulmonary embolus, right sided pulmonary embolus. So these were the points that I wanted to highlight this week in addition to what we've talked about last week just to for the sake of completeness uh, to the topic of pulmonary embolism. So be careful. PE has been reported to present in many presentations that are very similar to acute coronary syndrome. PE has been reported to cause ST elevation in the ECG especially in AVR V1 and V2. And lastly be careful. Simultaneous new T wave inversion in the inferior and anterior leads. This is P until proven otherwise. And this is it about this week. I hope you find this useful. Uh, as I said before, the links to the uh, references will be in the show notes of the video, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye for now.